whether you're towing a trailer or just driving your truck around, one of the most frustrating things is when you need to add air to one of your tires and either A, you can't find an air pump that's actually working at a gas station, or B, you can't find one that's powerful enough to inflate your RV tires. Well, today, I've got a solution. Hey, my name is Joe and I'm one half of Two Crazy Campers. And after losing a combined weight of more than 200 pounds, we discovered we had so much more energy for activities. Come along with us as we explore the great outdoors and join us on a brand new adventure. So as somebody who's owned a landscaping business for years, one of the things that I always found frustrating was trying to find a working air pump at a gas station. So many times when we needed air, whether it be for the truck itself, for our trailer, or even our mowers, the air pumps at the gas stations were either A, broken, B, there was a long line, or C, I didn't have any quarters. So I was always looking for a better solution. And I tried all different kinds of things. I purchased like a little pump that runs off of my Milwaukee batteries. And it worked well, but it took forever to use because it doesn't have a powerful pump. I tried things like having just three gallon portable containers that you fill up at home. That worked as well but it wasn't enough air if you had to do more than one tire. It wouldn't even fill up my entire truck tire. Uh, then I looked at things like cans of spare air. Problem with that is number one is it's expensive. And number two, it can ruin the inside of your rims, especially if you have things like TPMS in either your RV tires or on your truck tire. So my next solution was to actually have an onboard air pump. I saw the different ones from Vier where you just carried them in a bag, but I don't like having a bunch of stuff in the back seat of my truck. So on our old truck, we actually installed airlift bags and it came with an onboard air pump. So on that truck, I decided to tap into it and put a hookup to have an airline. And today we're gonna do something similar on our 2023 Ford F-250. Now before trading in our old truck, I did remove the air pump, the air tank, and all of the brackets that I had hanging everything. Now we're gonna be installing that air pump on our son's truck, and then I'm maintaining the air tank for this truck. As far as the pump, the reason I didn't keep that one for myself is I wanted something a little bit more powerful. Though the Vi air pump that I had worked well, it took a long time to inflate tires if your tank was empty. So it was really good for inflating the tank itself, but if you had to rely on the pump, it would take a while. So I wanted something that was going to inflate tires very quickly. So I started spending a lot of times in Facebook groups and things like that, and I found myself in Jeep groups because off-road Jeepers are always looking to inflate and deflate their tires. And this is what I came across, the ARB Twin Onboard Air Compressor. So I do wanna say we are not sponsored by ARB. I purchased this with my own money. I will leave a link for it down below, but I did read a lot of reviews and this air pump itself comes highly recommended. So let's get into the installation. So here's all our onboard air compressor stuff. This is the old compressor that was in our 2018. It's a good pump, but it does take a little bit longer if you're trying to fill up tires. And so we're actually going to take this and we're gonna put it into our son's car because he's got a Dodge Ram and we just put air lifts into his and currently he's just filling them by hand whenever he needs to add some shocks in. So we're gonna give that to him. But I am gonna keep this two and a half gallon tank because I like having the two and a half gallon reserve. For his car, we may just put like uh, a one gallon tank or something like that. So we're gonna keep this tank because I do like the fact that I can still add some air shocks if I want. On the other side, I have a shutoff switch for a pressure and then this is where the air is gonna come in. And this is gonna be our new compressor. So this is the ARB dual compressor. And so you have two pumps. Air is gonna come out here. Here's gonna be your air filters. The only problem is mounting it's a little bit more difficult. So when I mounted the Vier, I actually had to get a special bracket that I bolted up onto the frame of the truck. That's not gonna work with this one. Uh, this one, most people just buy these different brackets and they have all kinds of different brackets that are like 
anywhere between $100 to $150 because people are mounting them inside of their car, they're mounting them in their bed, they're mounting them in the engine compartment. Well, if you take a look at the engine compartment of these Fords with the 6.7, there is no room in the engine compartment. So I'm gonna still mount this one on the frame, but let me show you some of the issues we're gonna have. So on this pump, there is a mounting bracket included but most people don't use it. So you have this mounting bracket right here. It's got these eight holes and you can see there is a way that you can screw into it. Um, but the problem is you need to be able to access that and we can't for the way we're going to install it. So a lot of people buy these external brackets. Now this bracket actually comes off with these eight bolts. There's two, 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 and two on the other side. What we're gonna do is we're going to make a bracket. So instead of spending a hundred and something dollars, I have a piece of steel and I have a piece of aluminum. I think we're gonna use aluminum uh, because then I don't have to worry about painting this and all that other kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this aluminum and we're gonna basically cut it like this. So we're gonna put a piece over here hanging over the edge of the bracket and then a little bit hanging over on the other side of the bracket. We're gonna make two of them. So one is gonna go like this and one is gonna go like this. Then we could take the mounting bolts, drill through the aluminum into our actual pump. And then we can drill a hole here, a hole here, and the same thing on the upper and put that into the frame. So this way, if I need to take it down, I could just unbolt from the frame and this will just stay attached to the pump. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So first thing we need to do is actually go ahead and cut this aluminum in half. So we got our two pieces of aluminum. I think this is gonna work really well. Now we're just gonna go ahead and check it up against the pump. So if we put one like this, and then we put another one like this, and then we just drill our holes in and we drill our mounting holes, this is gonna work really well. So what we need to do now is take off this frame so we can mark our holes. Okay, we're over here at my upside down tote that I am using as a workbench because my garage is a mess. Anyway, uh, I've got the bracket off and we're gonna reuse this bracket because I want these vibration isolators. Not that it makes a huge difference, but it's a little bit. So I wanna be able to put it back in this bracket and then we're gonna mount it onto the frame and, and that will eliminate some of the vibration. Um, what we're gonna do now is this works out perfectly because if you look, these two pieces of aluminum are almost the exact width of this bracket. So now all I need to do is mark my four holes um, or eight holes rather. So we're just gonna mark the holes and then we could mount this onto the bracket and then we can put this back onto the air pump. So we've got the bracket mounted on the bracket. Uh, so now we're ready to go ahead and put this back on the air pump. Now, one thing that I'm sure you're probably saying is, hey, the problem is those bolts are gonna be flush up against the frame. And that means that the aluminum is not gonna be against the frame. I know that. I'm okay with that. I just don't have the tools to fabricate this where you can bend it. So I'm okay if this doesn't go flush against. I think what I'm actually gonna do is maybe just get a couple of washers and put the washers in between and that'll make it all flush. And if not, I'm just gonna tighten it down super tight and uh, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Uh, but right now we're gonna go ahead and put this back onto the air pump. And it is starting to rain. So we're gonna put this project on hold right now. Uh, it's a good thing I actually have to go to the store and get some new lock nuts uh, for putting up the air tank. So we're gonna go ahead and start mounting everything or at least figure out where we're going to mount it. And I think I know where I wanna put everything. So we're gonna try to put the tank like right about this area. Uh, we're gonna try to not cover up that box. If the box is in the way, we're just gonna kind of pry it off and move it out of the way. Uh, but this is the best place for it. We're gonna use the same hanger straps we made the last time we did it. And then we're going to put the pump up there 
and we're just gonna go ahead and disconnect those wires. So I'm gonna start off with the tank because that's gonna be the easiest. So I have these rods that I bent and this is what I used on the 2018. So we just are using the same ones over again and it's pretty much the same width as the frame rail. So we're just gonna hang them down over the frame rail and then they bolt into the aluminum uh, braces that I have mounted on the tank. So it's a little bit more difficult on this truck because there's a lot of extra wires here. So all I'm doing is pulling out the wire holders and then after I'm able to position everything, we'll put it back in place. But you have to be careful because there's wires on both sides of the rail on this truck. So unfortunately, because of the size of the tank I have, uh, it's pretty long. It's gonna go from over here all the way over to here. And so we're gonna be in front of this module, whatever this piece is, um, but it's not a big deal because the tank actually hangs down a little bit lower and away from it. So we're not gonna to be touching it and you'll, it'll still be accessible if we need it. The biggest thing is to just make sure that my uh, angle rods are touching the rail and they're not pinching these wires in. So you can see I just ran them in between the wires. Now we can go ahead and put the tank up. So this is probably the most difficult, especially with one person, because you got to hold it up and uh, get all the nuts on. But once you get two of them in there, it shouldn't be so bad. Okay, so we have the tank mounted. Uh, this is not gonna go anywhere. And it's pretty much in the same exact spot that the old one was at. Uh, I do believe we're going to be able to get rid of this, but I may still leave it hooked up, but just as like a backup fail safe. I don't know. I'm going to do some testing on it. Uh, this is, this right here is where uh, we're going to actually have the air come in from the compressor. And then these are going to eventually go to our airbags for now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna loop it back around because i don't have any plugs one thing you will notice is that i have a drain valve right here make sure you have a drain valve on the bottom so that you can drain this out every once in a while so now comes the hard part we're gonna go ahead and mount the pump so i'm gonna put it right here so we're gonna just kind of put this right here we're obviously gonna have to move those uh, wires out of the way so if i put it this way uh, the cables can route up to here and the air filters are up on top and we're close enough to our tank right here. So we're going to move those cables out of the way and then I'm going to mark the holes so we can pre-drill our holes. So all I do is just do this. I think that's going to work right about there. We may need to get a longer braided hose though. So now I'm just drilling the holes into the frame to mount up the bracket. I'm pre-drilling them with a step drill bit going to 1132. Then these are 3 8 inch by 16 by 1 inch. So they're 3 8 16 1 inch long thread cutter bolts. And so after I drill my holes, I just put these in and cut the threads. The key to getting these to cut the threads is to make sure they're in straight. I get it in as tight as I can get it and then I use my socket and I hold down the pressure while trying to keep it straight it's pretty easy again just try to keep it straight and the idea here is we're just trying to cut the threads once we get it in past the thread cutters I can pull it out Okay, so we have our compressor in over here. We have our tank over here. All we need to do now is run the wiring and then do the plumbing. And wiring is gonna be super easy because basically everything is already put together in connectors. So it's just running this up to the batteries and then running this to our switch. So we're gonna go ahead and do the plumbing. And actually the plumbing is gonna be easier than I thought too because we don't need this anymore. So this is a pressure switch that would disconnect the old Vier, but we don't need this because this actually has a pressure switch built into it. So we're gonna take this off, we're gonna put a plug there, 
We got to put our supply line from the compressor over here to the tank here. And then we got to run a line from the tank to the back bumper where we're going to have our onboard air. And we're just going to cap off where we're supposed to put our uh, shocks until we get our air shocks in. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this off here since we don't need this. And we're actually going to save it for uh, Anthony because then he won't have to buy one when we go ahead and put a tank on his truck. And then we got a uh, plug that we're going to put in here. And I just uh, covered the plug in Teflon tape. Now we're gonna go ahead and hook up our compressor cable and I've got this swivel connector. So we're gonna go ahead and use this. And then we gotta put this one over here. So I was trying to figure out where to put this quick connect for the hose line because last time I had it right here. The problem is it gets very difficult to tighten it because of how thick this piece is. Like it, it just barely makes it. And then I'm drilling this hole in the plastic and I'm worried that uh, you won't be able to get all the way through. And then I was looking and I think I found a good location. We won't even have to drill a hole. We're gonna put it right there. So I really like that. I feel like it's out of the way and uh, still super easy to get to. It's getting dark out, but we are almost done. I just keep stopping to do other things and take phone calls. Last thing we need to do is wire it and this is super simple. So. Uh, they've got these two fuses with uh, two reds, two blacks. This is going to go to the battery. And then the other side already has a plug on it. This just runs down to the compressor. Then there's a separate harness. We have to wire one wire to one of the Ford upfitter switches. First thing we do is run this. So here is the uh, fuse panel, which we're not gonna need for this, but here's the wires for the upfitter switches. I have to look and see what color I need. And we're gonna wire to this battery because we have two batteries and this is the closest one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this down uh, and then go down up and underneath and then figure out how much length we need. Hopefully we don't have to add any wire onto this. So we definitely have more than enough room. Here is the wire. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it right up along in here. I think we can uh, snake this down through with this other wiring harness. If we can push that down, I'm gonna to try to do it with uh, one hand, but I have a feeling I'm about to put down the camera. But we're gonna to try to run this down through and uh, there's the pump right there. So we have more than enough wire. So we've got it plugged in here. And then uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna zip tie all of these together so everything runs smoothly. We just need to get the harness for the upfitter switch. So if you have a 2023 F250, 350, probably 450, I don't know. I've never looked inside of the 450, but I definitely for the 350 and the 250, uh, your owner's manual is now in the radio. So here's how you're going to find your owner's manual. You go to features, owner's manual, then you hit categories. And then if you go to instrument panel and interior, and then scroll all the way down, you'll see auxiliary switches. If you hit that, it tells you where to locate them, how to find the wiring, how to identify the wiring, and then there's some videos. So if you go to locating, here's your switches, obviously. I hopefully we can all figure out where the switches are. They're above our head. Then we go to where are the wiring. So there's some inside of the hood, as well as there is some down here in the fuse panel. Since we're outside already, we're gonna to go to the one in the hood. You have to really dig down to get to them, but you can get to them and they're all taped off. You're, you're barely gonna be able to figure out that they're there. And you can see it's all taped behind the battery tray. Uh, it took me a little bit of work to get to them, but I did get to them. And then this is gonna tell us all the different wiring. So what we're gonna do is, I think we're gonna put it on, um, since we only have to do the switch, I think we're gonna put it on auxiliary six. Okay, it's the next day, it's light out. We're gonna finish up this wiring. Just a couple things that I need to do. So on the 2003 F250 and F350, we've got our main fuse panel in the engine compartment right here. This is the passenger side. And then right next to it, there's this little black box that has some more relays and fuses in it. And this actually gets tucked down. I've already kind of lifted it up to make this a little bit easier. But basically what you do is you lift this up and then down below you have all of your wires for your upfitter switches. 
And these wires are both here as well as in the cabin behind the other circuit panel on the passenger side. So you don't have to run wires through the firewall anymore. We're gonna put this to number six. I've already tapped into it. There is a label right here. Number six is this, if you can really see it, it is this gray wire with an orange stripe down it. And all I did was tap into it with a single wire. That's all we need to do. Now I can just take this, tuck it back down and reattach it, which I probably will not be able to do with one hand. And then we're gonna put the cover back on. So then we have our power supply wires for the air compressor. Uh, you have two reds and a black and then a small black. You can actually join these together. Now when they come, they are already stripped, but there's no terminals on it. So make sure you put terminal connectors on it. And we're gonna put the both reds onto the positive of the battery. And then we're gonna put the black onto the negative. Now from there, there's an entire wiring harness that comes with your air compressor. But if you're just using this as an air compressor into a tank for your F-250, you don't need all these wires. And all you really are concerned about is this piece right here and the purple wire. So we can literally cut all of this stuff off. So we're just gonna kinda go ahead and cut it right here. And then take that to the side. You can take these wires and get rid of them. You don't need them. We're gonna connect this down below onto the air compressor. And then we take this purple wire that we'll take out We'll tap it into our wire that goes to our upfitter switch and we are all done. So there's one issue with this ARB hose connector that we're gonna put on the outside of the truck and that is this connection. This is a JIC connection. So we need to be able to convert it to NPTF. So I went on Amazon. The only thing I can find that they had in stock on Amazon Prime was this one. This converts from a JIC, so it's a female JIC, but it goes to a male NPTF but then we have to get another connector to go from a male, so a female, to a push pin NPTF. So this piece here is gonna go on here just like this. I'll have to tighten it up when I have two hands available. Then this is gonna go over here just like that. And then our airline tubing can go from here into our tank. So we're all done with the installation. My airlift bags did show up. So I've got those installed as well and I've got it all tied into the system. Let me go ahead and show you everything that we've got. We'll start off here in the back. So here on the back of the truck on our trailer hitch, we have our AirB Quick Connect for our air connection. I really like this one. It is much easier to use than some of the ones you buy in Harbor Freight and Home Depot and stuff. Uh, it's specifically designed for using on Jeeps and things like that. So it does have a cover to cover your connection. And you'll notice that this one you can't move around until you put in your connection. So we're gonna take our air hose and we're gonna push it in. And now we're charged. Now to disconnect it, all we need to do is push in on this and that will automatically pop out the hose. Now I've charged this line, so it may fly. Hopefully I don't knock over the camera, but we'll grab the one in and just kind of push it in. And now we're disconnected. So we're gonna go ahead and connect again. Then on the other end of the hose, we have another quick connect. And then we have our tire inflator. Now this hose I actually got from Harbor Freight. This hose has lasted me forever. Don't use the cheap plastic hoses. This one works really, really well and it's super flexible so you can roll it up and store it behind your seat. Now on the tire inflator, I got this on Amazon. I'll leave a link for it down below. Uh, I've actually got the lock flate. This did not come with the tire inflator, uh, but this is the best attachment that you could possibly get for a tire inflator. We're not sponsored by them or anything like that, but I'll leave a link for it down below. So the way the lock flate works is it's got this little lever on here. And when you press on this, it exposes these teeth. These teeth then grab onto your valve stem and when you let go, it's got a secure connection and you don't have to sit there and hold it. Now you can just sit here and use your tire pressure gauge and uh, inflate and deflate and watch the pressure. They also make these for grease guns. Again, highly recommend. I will leave a link for it down below. Let's go ahead and show you the rest of the installation. Even though I'm not showing the installation, I will show you there's the airlift bags and then we have the stainless steel braided hoses that feed up over to the tank and to the front switch. So I wanted to show you this angle. This is again, laying down on the ground and you can see the compressor there. Um, I actually like the blue hanging down, but you really don't notice it unless you're far away from the truck. 
If you're right up next to the truck, you can't see it hanging down, but that was the best place to install it. So we're leaving it there, but I actually like the look of it. Uh, now from there, we have our air pump. We have our stainless steel braided hose that goes over to the supply side there. And that's feeding into our tank. Here on the back of the tank, we have our air lines that feed our airlift bags as well as the quick connect. And this red one here is going to follow down along. It goes along the back there. And then it runs here along the bottom of the truck and then feeds down to the quick connect. And then up here in the little mini glove box, we have our gauge for our air lift. So right now I don't have any air in them. What we do is we just press this button up and the truck increases in uh, pressure. You heard our pump kick on. And then to deflate the truck, we just press this button right here. Okay, editing Joe here. As I was editing the video, I thought it would be fun to find out how long does it take to fill up one of my truck tires on the F-250 if it was completely flat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let all the air out of this tire and then we're gonna fill it with the onboard air compressor. And we need to fill these tires to 70 PSI. So we'll go ahead, we'll empty this tire out and then we'll go ahead and refill it with a stopwatch. Okay, we're down to 3.5 PSI. I'm not gonna let all of the air out cause I don't wanna accidentally break the bead. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn on the truck and then start filling this up. And just so you can see, we are flat. Okay, here we go. Air pump kicked on. Okay, about one minute in, let's see where we're at. 22. About a minute 30, we're at 30. About two minutes in, we're at 37. About 2.30, we're at 44. And we actually have to go to 65. That's actually what I set them at when I'm towing. The other tire on the other side is at 65. So that's where we're gonna go. We're gonna go to 65. We're about three minutes in, we're at 50. 56 at three minutes and 30 seconds. 65. That is not bad. It took about four minutes and 15 seconds to fill this tire up from flat to 65 PSI. And for reference, my truck tires are 275, 65 R20. Well, that's the entire installation for my onboard air system. And I'm super happy with the way it came out. It's gonna give me so much peace of mind knowing that I never have to worry about finding an air compressor again, that everything is right here in my truck. So whether I need to add air to my truck, my RV, tubes when we want to go rafting, or if I just want to help out a fellow RVer who needs air in one of their tires, it's always going to be right there. It's really nice to know that I have a good air pump with twin compressors that's going to inflate tires quickly, and it's got a shutoff valve so I can keep air in the tank at all times. Then the best part is I always have an air horn, which if I blow it again, Rachel's going to yell at me, so we won't do that but it really just is a great system. So let us know down in the comment section, is this something that you would be willing to try on your truck? Now, again, I love doing tinkering on my truck. It's not that difficult of an installation. It is a little time consuming because you got to map out and run all the hoses, but overall, it's not a complicated installation. It's just gonna take you a little bit of time, but you can always find somebody that can help you out if it's something that you don't think you can do yourself. Now again, I will leave links for everything that I use down below. This video isn't sponsored. It's just something that I really wanted to do to my truck because we did enjoy having it on the old truck. Now, if you like this video, if you got any use out of it, please do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. That does two things. Number one, it really does help build the channel, which we greatly appreciate you guys doing. But more importantly, it lets us know what kind of videos you guys are looking to see. Now, while you're down there, also make sure you hit the subscribe button and that little bell notification button. This way you are notified every time we upload a new video. And until next time, happy camping.